was th- I was thinking I was actually thinking about um, the show community the other day. Yeah. And I realized you kind of remind me of like a white Abed. <laughs> as best I would put it, like both in stature and a little bit in personality, but more in stature, I would say. I, I can say, you know what, I'll take that. Albino. Uh, who's my Troy? Who's your Troy? Yeah. I don't know if you have a Troy. What? How do I, how, how does Abed not have a Troy? You can't well, have Troy, Troy and Troy Abed. Troy started in... Childish Gambino and moved away. <laughs> you can't have Troy and Abed in the morning without, without Troy. True. Anyways, not that you had to record that. I just, I thought it was funny. And it's I, cool. I thought about it the other day. I'm okay with that. You know, yeah, I'm okay with that. I can be, I can be Abed. White I, Abed. White, white albino Abed. Abed. Well, because you're very blonde. Yeah. Plus, you're just white in general. I'm very white, yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I guess, well, I'm kind of brown. I'm more of a... What are you? You're just white I don't Caucasian, know. Who would I right? be in? I don't I'm trying know. to think of who I'd be if you were to use archetypes from community. Did you watch uh, a lot of that show? Yeah, it I used to be my favorite. Uh, first four seasons. Yeah, and then it went horrible. Uh, yeah. I actually really like the later season episodes. I, I'm trying to remember... When it was at its peak for me was when they were doing the uh, blanket war and the Pella war. You remember that mm, one? Yeah, where they had their little the... universe just becomes it just works. Some for some reason, like you just accept that on that campus that they'd be doing antics such as that. The paintball thing kind of pissed me off a little bit. They milked it a little bit too long. The first se- the first one was incredible. Okay, so let's see. I'm Abed. I who would I don't you know I don't even remember the freaking character names. Okay, so there's Abed and Troy, obviously. Yeah. There's Pierce Hawthorne. Yep, that's the there's old guy, right? There's Britta. There's Annie. There's Jeff Winger. And I think that's... Oh, and she, uh, is it Shelly? No, shh. Oh, what's her name? The Christian mom. The black one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, white Abed. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly? Sherry? It's his S. S, it's an S something. I'm Let's definitely see. not her. No. I'm not really Jeff Winger. Jeff Winger's too confident. Jeff Winger's awesome. Um, Britta's too. Shirley uptight. Bennett, you're right. You know what? I would say, I want, I want you to be Jim Rash, the dean, the dean. Okay. I want right. you to be that. <laughs> I'll, t- <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I can't. I can't say that I cross dress <laughs> like him. But well, why not? Rocky Horror Picture Show is a thing. I've been there. I've done it. Yeah, I've done so it. I. They used to do. At, at Comic Con, I am. I do love that character though. So good. Dean, dean, dean. Oh, so Rocky Horror Pictures. They used to do the live shadow plays at a uh, Comic Con. Mm-hmm. My first time ever actually seeing that film was at Comic Con, and they had the whole outfit and the mm. characters and stuff. That's not a good movie. It's 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 environmental. <laughs> I think you have to be in the right definitely time does. place to enjoy it fully. It's a good. And it, it's it's a good first half of a movie. It, it runs out of steam. It's I, I don't, so fast. I, I don't know if I've ever finished the movie. Like it starts and it's like you kind of get sucked in a little bit and it's fun and then it just starts to. I think right around the time that he's like bobbing in the pool, I oh, just yeah. tune out. I yeah. don't even pay attention anymore. Yeah, no, the the because we went back the next year. We left halfway through. Are there cult classics anymore? I mean, I feel like pop culture is so diverse now oh. that it there's not enough. You know what I mean? Do you see what I'm no, going I get with this? It. Like, I was thinking about okay, I was thinking about this in regards to music too, because I don't know about you, but I most of my music I get from Spotify, and so okay. you know there is pop music, there is radio music that exists, but you know you only listen to radio if you have to. So oh, absolutely, I have an infinite supply of just fractaling music that from every reach. The and I ask someone, hey, have you heard of this before? And there's no way they ever have because there's so much of it. It mm-hmm. seems so that makes that made me think like okay, so. Back in you know the 50s and 60s and 70s, you want music to be heard. It goes on the radio, mm-hmm. and it's either going to be ridiculously popular. You're the Beatles, or you're, I don't know, um, one hit wonder. I'm trying to think of someone barely, someone like t- crappy college radio. Yeah, you're you're where you're, you're a, stuck in. You're it. like a, a small one hit wonder, or you're just like a real niche thing. But even as a niche thing back then, you still got your little bit of play, and you still had your people from around the country that loved what you did. I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is like, can anything be cult on the same level as Rocky Horror, where it's you know, it's not huge, but it has a real devoted following that's big. I guess it can. Sherlock. That that what I'd call pop culture. Like you're talking about the show. Yeah. Yeah. So that, you're saying that's across the threshold. It's niche, pop but not. Yeah, I guess maybe that's the hard part now is because there's so much entertainment. What is the line between niche and not niche? You know. You I'm know, not. I'm not. I'm not stoned enough to answer that question. I'm, not stoned either. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, we need to do that show. That show needs to happen next. <laughs> what would the name for that one be? Um, so I'm trying to think, um, 
What's a double entendre? With I know. Marijuana? I'm trying to think of like a cards and shit esque thing that's like you know hash and <laughs> oh. <laughs> hash something and hash, hash and tag now. Um, uh, I'm out. Colin, I'm throwing this hell. I don't got nothing. We'll find something. <laughs> that's that's something you need. To, uh, you know what? Th- the board game. That's everything. Happen, by the way. I've it's got to be. It's gonna happen. It's got to be because you get the family you oriented and everything. Yet, right. We'll find a place. We'll just drive Somewhere. to Colorado every month. <laughs> That you know what? Because there's so many shows that are family oriented with board games. You know, Dice Tower, Pair of Dice, yeah, that Happy Mittens podcast. Like, and then there's a show called Happy Mittens. It's really, really good. Oh, is it? It's really good. Uh, listen, I'm yeah. not judging. I'm just saying it's called Happy Mittens. That, no, I take that back. So there's one that's doing vulgar adult, like in your face, like the Cannibal Corpse of kind of. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. It's a uh, uh, inside the box or outside the box. Oh, I they think do, I have heard of that. They do video reviews. Okay. And there's a dildo in at least every single one of their episodes. Okay. They they reviewed uh They know their audience. Yes, they do. <laughs> they reviewed um the uh the the Magic the Gathering board game, the Duel Arena of the Planeswalkers I've or whatever. Seen the box, yeah. So you got the miniatures, right? Mm-hmm. And they were like, "Oh my god, this is going to be worth so much money in so many years because that's what happened with Alpha and what happened with Beta." So we're going to sleeve the cards, but how do we protect the miniatures? You just don't open the box. 3D protection devices. Or a Trojan. Wait, they put them in little, they like... They put them in condoms. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that seems so, awkward, though. I, it seems like they would just flop around on the board. I don't know. Well, no, because, like, you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm like, the logistics of that in my mind, It's it, the condom tends to... I don't know, not form fit. Well, I mean, it, it's supposed to form It was fit. loose. It was definitely That's loose. That's the problem I'm thinking about. It seems like they would just... Okay. I don't know. I think the listeners understand. <laughs> I think I'm for painting clear so, in the picture. Yeah, so then they tied the top of the rubber shut. Okay, and so up the, at bottom, the top. So the top, yeah. the, the top, it's open at the top then. Because I'm thinking, like, if you take a G.I. Joe. The opening is at the top, And yes. you put it in a condom. Yeah. <laughs> it's just going to, it's just going to, it's not, and you can't enjoy it. You can't enjoy the aesthetics of it either because it's just, like, encapsulated. But it's protected forever. <laughs> Why don't you just buy a second game? If you're that interested in the money aspect, this is the thing I don't understand <laughs> about collectors. Like, okay, I don't, you know me, I don't sleeve too many things. I think I right. sleeved, I sleeved one thing. What did I sleeve? I sleeved my copy of Coup. I just, I come from the point of view of like, there's so much shit yeah. that just buy, just buy, if it gets broken, just buy a second one, you know? Like, but what I, if it was I, out of print? What if you've got like, what if you've got a copy of, of. Then somehow life p- will go on. Of pillars. Somehow. <laughs> what if you lose one of your building blocks for pillars of the earth i haven't played that game it's it's a, I need a building block in it and if i lose it I the can't play turn it. marker is like you're building a cathedral or okay. like you're building a church and like depending on whatever turn you're okay, on no, i see what you're saying like there's specific pieces that you can't really replace when you play the game yeah okay now i see where you're coming from with that i just ah oh man that collector mentality it's such a slippery slope i think it's, it's just it's coming coming from the magic yeah. background Yes. 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 Know? Because I this is just stuck with me to board games, and I think I'm finally done with it. But there's no more need for me to buy the expansions. Yeah. When I was playing Magic, I'm like, okay, so there are cycles of cards, right? You've got you know allied du- color dual lands, mm-hmm. shock lands, stuff like that. If I collect all of them, good. If I collect a playset of all of them, even better, because then I can just like play it done. Good. That has transi- translated to board games. With such a ferocity, you just meaning like you have to own every. I have to own every bit of it. So like <laughs> that's why that that's why I'm kind of PO at Kickstarter a whole bunch of the times because you have the Kickstarter exclusive yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, if 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 a, if a game is doing that, I don't want any freaking part of it. That's funny. I don't want it. Funny. We could we could talk about that for a second. Do um, it. Because I'm I'm in a weird position because like I'm trying to make games if I can. Right. Not easy to do. Right. <laughs> and I'm a minimalist of a human Mm -hmm. in the sense that I don't buy a lot of stuff. I'm not a heavy consumer, which I feel in some ways hurts me a little bit. Like, I feel like I wish I could get more in the mindset of someone who's excited to buy things, you know? Um, Don't worry. I got that covered for you. Okay, good. Maybe you can. Well, okay. So that said, um, whenever I'm building stuff for a game, I just think of it like, okay, I just only think about the experience. I only think about like, what is it going to be? What is the, what is the, what is the, oh, I bought the game. So there's pleasure in getting this box. I'm, you know, and then I'm going to play this game and then the pleasure in having fun playing the game. But it's become really clear to me for many reasons, both, I mean, it's been basically, like, how do I put this? I know for a fact, let's put it that way, that 
and, and I'm sure everyone does, but that people that are making games are going like, okay, we're going to make this game, mm-hmm. and then we're going to make an expansion for this game. They're like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, do you know what the expansion's going to be? No. We're just going to do it. We're just going to do it. We're going to leave. Like, why? Because, because that is how you have to make money. And so in the same ways as Kickstarter exclusive, yeah. I mean, that is literally what they are there for. It's like, you can do this and make less money, or you can do it and make more money. And if you want to keep making games, you need to keep making more money. And so it's like this, ugh, it's like this painful. That translates directly into miniatures. Into miniatures? For, for Kickstarter games, absolutely. Because yeah. there are so many games that don't necessarily need miniatures. I can't even imagine how expensive. Oh, no, yeah, how expensive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, everybody knows this, but the, are you familiar with Kingdom Death Monster? Kingdom Death Monster. It was, a, it was a game that was on Kickstarter like three or four years ago. It was $150, and you would get this sort of a thing where um, you, you encounter creatures, and you fight them, and then you harvest their bodies for parts, and then you put those parts for armor and stuff like that. So the whole appeal for it was like miniatures. Like you'll get to customize your miniature after you kill each beast, and you can <laughs> apply individual armor kits to your people and all that fun stuff. 150 bucks. That's a lot of money for a game. It is. But I'm like, I'm still new to everything. So I'm like, <laughs> this looks awesome. The, the, yeah. the art is fantastic. The game looks pretty solid for me not knowing like a goddamn thing about anything at the time. And and so I'm like, ah, you know what? I, just got, I, I do kind of got to pay rent. So I backed up. Fair enough. Goes along. I'm still following the project because the miniatures are absolutely gorgeous. And at the time, I was just painting anything that I could get my hand I was, on. I was tempted to get Rivet Wars Ooh, for that reason. So I yeah. love how they look. But continue. But it's a $100 two-player game. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, listen, I get it. That's So a few years go by, and they've not done anything with the game. They're still selling the miniatures, special editions, resin pinups, hmm. like super macabre versions of all of these characters that are being included in the game and they've got the expansion set up and they've got the models for that and they're selling those individually but the game is like nowhere to be found and then all of a sudden you know three four years later or however long it was oh so th- it's it's coming out now it's shipping in like a month and a half hmm. so here's the thing <laughs> okay. kickstarter backers you paid 150 bucks fine perfect do it the game had grown so large that the retail version of the game is four hundred and fifty dollars. You know that's okay. That's I'm glad we're talking about this. This is the other thing I noticed. I go on Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Every other game I see is a miniature game. Yeah, it seems because like. miniatures because, sell. Yes, because miniatures sell. I, where are they going? They're not going in these shops, are they? We're in a shop, obviously, right now. Anyone can hear us. I, I understand. I mean, it seems as niche as it gets, and I'm not. I'm not dogging it at all. I'm just trying to like wrap my head around what the long term plan when you're making miniature games as a business is. Because, I, I mean, like I said, every day, yeah. every day there's a new miniature game yeah, on Kickstarter. Absolutely. They're not all going to be in this store. There's just not enough space. That's there's just not enough space. There's not enough demand. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just a Kickstarter phenomenon in that sense. I mean, you have the, the obvious ones, like cool mini or not games. Right. Those are going to make it in. But, the, I mean, I'm not even talking about just those. It seems like... Well, okay, so looking at the shelf right over here at Game Depot and... Mm-hmm. Mesa, Arizona. Off of <laughs> Game off Depot of in Mesa, Arizona, people. Come on down. It's cool in here. It's That's hot nice. outside. It's very nice. It's the only place we could get access to that had air conditioning. It was nice. <laughs> Patty over there. <laughs> we might have an exclusive interview with Patty later. <laughs> and she can tell us what she thinks about it. Looking over at the shelf there, we've got... Exp- we got Okay, so we got character packs for a Descent, second edition. We've got Fire Team Bravo, another miniature game. And then we've got... Uh, the the latest um, Zombicide Black Plague yeah, stuff on the shelf not. there. And those are all character packs, but the... I totally get it, because... Okay, well... I'm rebuttal. talking about these $100 games. Rebuttal. Okay. <laughs> Rivet Wars. Yeah. Right? Two-player $100 game. Very cool, though. That game sells really well over when our other game store oh, really? was open. They sold a copy of it like every two weeks or so. Maybe, maybe the magic of miniatures. Okay, so I, I used to work it's with this... It's a toy factory. Yes. It's okay, got to be that. That's exactly where I was going with it. I used to work with a guy. His name was Gary Ham. He's an incredible artist. He is way more into the designer toy world. Uh-huh. Like, I'm not like toy person, but he's like into vinyl toys and all that stuff, and he's designed them. He's won awards for doing them. And there is definitely in this crazy, like, arrested, developed man-child culture that we live in, a adult toy fetish and i think oh, that yes. the, the miniature games definitely cover that where it's like oh it's a game so i can i can feel cool about that mm-hmm. but look how cool this guy looks i mean i'll admit when i played cthulhu wars all i wanted to do yes all i wanted to do is just yes. around play with those little things 
That's it. That's, I was happy with that, and it, it almost made it worth it. Building yeah. on that, Quinn, you know, showed up and sit down. Kind of. Matt Lee's, um, Quinton Smith, stuff like that. The, the, the British blokes were freaking awesome at everything. They reviewed Quadropolis. Okay. And they, in Quadropolis, you have meeples at a really, really tiny I want to play that game still. It's supposed to be super good. It's on the, it's on the list. Here. It is on the list. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Double feature. Anyways, go on. They've got these, t- like, half size meeples. They're translucent blue. And they look really, really cool. They're like the, the Carcassonne dice game or yeah. like the collector's edition or whatever Carcassonne. In his review, he had mentioned that he would just get lost in his turn playing with those meeples <laughs> as individual people. Yeah. And that's like for miniatures, a meeple is the most basic that you can get because it's a dude with arms and the, no head. The meeple, yeah, <laughs> that was the most zen shape they were able to create when it comes into like a game piece. I don't know. People just, I just, even I to this day enjoy them. But like, even it doesn't, the, 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 the toy factor doesn't even necessarily apply to just miniatures. I think no. that the toy factor is anything that isn't a cardboard piece. Yes. When we played that um, Agricola two player game, I just liked that there were little pigs. All creatures big and small. The game is fantastic. I, I, I liked, I liked their little horses. I yeah. Little, I was perfectly, I was happy with that. I felt happier because of it. You make the horses have sex with each other I, and <laughs> stack them on top. Oh, what is it? The other one? Uh, Botswana, yeah, came Botswana with was, the. Which, by the way, it's funny is I stopped yeah. by the Eagle um, Eagle Griffin booth at um, at Origins, uh-huh. and they had a. Uh, we're going to talk about Botswana. Don't worry. No. <laughs> <laughs> they had uh, originally Botswana was part of their bookshelf series. Was it? it was like number three or four or five. Well, I don't. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But it was. It was part of that. Well, I noticed it wasn't part of the bookshelf series, and then I went around. I was like walking around the booth, and now it's called like. African Safari. It's a bigger box, okay. exact same game. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I got the impression that they're like repackaged that whole game because they realized this has some really good target toy factor to it. We need to make it look bigger. So I don't know. New name. It's not called. There's no Botswana anymore. Let's put it that way. So we should mention at this point, you did the art for Botswana. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can well, I mean, just that. for disclaimer, sort of thing. So the new yeah. edition, entirely new stuff. N- no, new it's, art this, it's my art still. Is it really? <laughs> they just use. They just. Yeah. They they use my art on it. Oh, I'm fine cool. with that. Um, I just I was surprised. There's no more. I don't know. Maybe maybe I have a collector's edition game. Maybe that's what you're talking about. There's a ga- there's no game <laughs> called Botswana anymore. Now Sleeve your cards, damn it! <laughs> I know. I should. God damn it. Anyways, it was fun. Um. So okay, we've got tiny wooden horses. Yes. Agricola, which is big and small. We've got actual toy zebras, lions, and stuff for Botswana. And then Haba has got this on point. Granted, Haba is a kids game manufacturer, but I had the chance to play Animal Upon Animal yesterday. Yeah. That game is awesome. awesome. It's just so crazy, and God, we're just, the theme has developed. The toy yeah. factor. Oh yeah, no, I mean, I actually bought that game for my nephew and niece. Yeah. as a like a gift. And you never gave it to him. Oh no, I gave it to him. <laughs> I, I kind of didn't want to though, because I, 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 it's beautiful. It's a beautiful game. It's good, and the little pieces look awesome. And it does seem like one of those games that kind of transcends age a little bit. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I'd rather play that than like Jenga. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, because you can play with the little snake and the little little porcupines. Make them have sex with each other. It's fine. <laughs> do that. I mean, it's called Animal on Animal. <laughs> it's in the name. <laughs> there's a there's like another version of that too. There's, there's a, quite a few. Yeah. Are there multiple? Okay, I saw like one was more like a farm animal. Yeah, you've got your and... your chapter packs really, where you've got farm animals, you've got Antarctic animals, and they're all compatible. Genius. I guess. But it's so cool. I mean, hmm. I'm trying to think. To make a game like that, you got to have a 3D printer. Otherwise, otherwise, how do you? How do you prototype? How it? do you prototype? How do you test it out? How do you? You know what I mean? It's amazing segue there. There's a a game called uh, Fantastic Beasts. Fantastic Beasts. It is the concept of Animal Upon Animal, where you roll a dice, you place a creature on a stack. But each of these creatures is like a geometric sculpt, where you've got like um, bears, sharks eagles stuff like that and you're stacking them on a plinth the animal that you stack on next to ha- all animals first off have an rfid chip in them an rfid chip yeah so like if you're, you're familiar with amiibos oh yeah yeah okay so that sort of a thing where you put it here it's going to recognize that this hey this is a shark and this is shark is on top of a bear gotcha and this combination of the shark and the bear makes a bear shark and you get points for that oh cool and huh. it's it's so it's like an app-enabled game. It is an you app-enabled to, game, yeah. You have to play it with. Okay, that's cool. It's even crazy because the last build that I saw of it, it even knows the orientation of how you stack the animals. Hmm. So you're stacking all of these, and you're rolling dice, seeing which one you can stack or whatever. And then 
points are determined and if you knock it over something happens or whatever I, it was just this amazingly beautiful game and it was on kickstarter it had it came with like nine or different animals and they're not tiny animals like people size of like full-on beautiful geometric sculpts hmm. of stuff um and i was so wanted i so wanted it so bad but i couldn't justify the price point but That's... here's the thing they got hit with uh, a cease and desist from Warner Brothers because the name is too similar to uh, Harry Potter and the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I've heard of that. But... Like, fantastic and fabulous, but not... Dumb. I don't know. It was super dumb. Miniatures are the way to get money. Miniatures and expansions. I hate expansions. Yeah? Mostly. I mean, there's a few times when they can't help, but... Like what? What do you got? Th- okay, let me think about that. What are, What is an expansion that I own that I always play with. I can tell you for for a fact, me none. None? None. There is no expansion that I will exclusively only play a game with. Like for some it's uh the leaders expansion for Seven Wonders, yeah. which I also had a chance to play the first time yesterday and I won. Yeah. It was nice. It was oh, great. Seven Wonders. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great, right? Super good. It's a good game. Super good. But do you see what I mean when I say like <laughs> I mean, I think it came out first, but it's I mean it's it's basically Sushi Go, except yeah. a little more complex. And it's, yeah. I kind of, that's fine. Yeah, Sushi so, Go is Seven Wonders Light. Absolutely. Wonders Light, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if you're in a mood for a heavier game, you play Seven Wonders. You're in for a lighter game, you Do play it. Sushi Go. Same feel. Anyways. And then Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition. Okay. There's a there's a, a weird rule where um, you can just claim a victory point or something, and there's an expansion that doesn't allow you to do that every turn. And that is considered a requirement by TI3 fans. But, I mean, that's really the only thing thing that i can think of yeah I, I mean and granted i don't own a ton of games but a game with an expansion that i have to play with the expansion because it's better that way no i don't have a single one not anything about it um, like I, I can think of variants like for ticket to ride the different map packs and stuff yeah, like but that that's different you know um wow i wonder if we've stumbled upon something like if a game even needs an expansion okay well wait well no no you got nothing know. I was about to say uh, St. Petersburg. I have the expansion, but I don't think I have to use. And I, I just have them all mixed together because it's convenient. Mm-hmm. But we talked ourselves into a hole here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a plan, guys. We don't have a plan. We're just spitballing. Spitball. I'm gonna be entirely surprised if this is all right to put up. How much do you edit these when you? Not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot, really. Just take out the weird lulls and yeah, do some cross cuts. I truncate the silence a little bit. I'll t- I'll try to take out some ums every now and then. If you had to guess based on the noise level, oh, this is this setup here is great. Is it good? This so is great. So I like, sound fine. You're, not you're great. Yell behind me. There's okay. a little bit of the background noise, but it, it's small enough that I think I can key it out. But okay. if I can't, it's low enough that it's not a problem. It's not like what we were doing with with cards and shit before, where it was just we had an open microphone, an yeah. omnidirectional microphone, and it was picking up everything. This is pretty. This is pretty good. Yeah, this is pretty isolated to things. You have these before? These are. I did. Slick. No, I definitely. <laughs> I did. I had this whole. Set up, I must have got it in like 2008, I think, and I just never thought to use it. Did you have this stuff for music before, or did it always start with podcasting? I'm just going to start interviewing you. I don't Do care. it. I haven't been interviewed in ages. No, I think I started off with music because I, I bought, let's see, so I have a M Audio Fast Track Pro that they don't make anymore. And my dad picked it up for me on Craigslist for like 50 bucks. I was like, hey, you bought a guitar pedal to play Santa Monica by Everclear. Uh. I know it was the first <laughs> song I'd ever played, and I bought a pedal for it. And he was like, "Well, hey, just in case, you can plug this in your computer, and you have a whole bunch of pedal settings just in your computer." So I think that's where it came from. But I had never used it. I never used it for anything. I didn't even really start recording anything until I got the 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 first Zoom microphone that we used for our first few episodes of Cards and Shit. And then I've been using this awesome H4n for a little bit. I've been doing a lot of... Is this... So this thing I'm pointing at... Yeah. This is the Zoom H4n. That's the Zoom. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's got a... This is so dumb. Nobody cares about this. But <laughs> it's got... I think the problem with these, these things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you right there. I listen to some podcast. I, I hate... You can almost tell when it sounds like they're trying to appease the... Where they have an actual script? Well, not even a script. It's like when you try to second guess what people want to listen to, yeah. it falls apart. Now, that's not to say that I know what people want to listen to. This could be dog shit, what I'm saying right now. <laughs> but sometimes, I don't know. Sometimes, anyways, I think you see what I'm saying. It's, it's, there's this. That's why I like the Rooster Teeth podcast, because they, they have a core 
like, oh, okay, we're going to talk about video games, or we're going to talk about the content that we've produced, like our, yeah. our, our, our shorts and stuff like that. They also just don't kind of care. They have these things that they're going to touch on, but if they want to talk about, I don't know, building an elevator to, to the moon, they're going to. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I get it. There's got to be a certain, a certain uh, structure to it. Otherwise, it'll go off the rails forever. But considering you haven't done this in a while, I guess sort of a reform is the way to go. It definitely. Okay, so I've got a list of here on Reddit about games that actually require, exp- more or less, in opinion, require expansions. Yeah. King of Tokyo with a power-up expansion. I've never played that. It adds individual player powers. Oh. Hmm. You know what? I can see that. I don't know if that's an every time thing for me, but I definitely say that. Well, let's see. What about how often do you play Carcassonne? Carcassonne? Yeah. Um, I loved. I like that game. I guess you know it's funny that you mention it. Have you played with the river? God, you're right. That's the one. Yeah. The, the river is the one thing that I think always makes Carcassonne better. Breaks up the fields. Yeah. The the Twilight Imperium uh, expansion that fixes the problems of the shattered empire. Yeah, I didn't. I can't even think of that. Now, that, yeah, my one. I have the big box of Carcassonne, but I basically only play with the river and the regular set and don't play with any of the other ones because this gets nuts. We played, what was it? We played with the, the dragon and the princess. That was <laughs> that was so fun. Oh my that gosh. Was, I mean, oh God. It was so ridiculous. It was so good. So good. Viticulture. Viticulture is the one that I absolutely would only play with the Tuscany expansion. Really? Yeah, because the core, first edition core, just seems like it's missing something. How are... um. And maybe it was. Maybe it was like, yeah. hey guys, we can and the we Tuscan, need to separate these things. They <laughs> acknowledge that. <laughs> I don't know. Let me ask you, actually. Uh, have you played, because that's a Jamie Stagmeyer mm-hmm. game. How, have, have you played some of those games? So you played Viticulture, obviously. I have played Euphoria, Euphoria as well. I ended up with a Kickstarter version of like the Super Deluxe of Euphoria. How, are they good games? That's right. Euphoria is great. Are Euphoria games? has... Are they heavier games? Are they... <sighs> I would say they're medi- like a heavy medium. I guess, yeah. Maybe. Heavy medium. Because Viticulture especially, there's so many stages that you have to kind of just, okay, I have to do this in order to do, to, to do gotcha. this. And this is how I get to that. You have to think very for, you have to think. You're thinking at least three or four time, turns ahead. Okay. But you're also playing around the other people and mitigating that. I don't know. Viticulture is just such a good and well thought out game. Hmm. Honestly, I don't think about the, the, the weight the weight of it for that one just because it's so good i'm just curious i've never played any of his games like i was there's a couple characters a couple characters that i'm learning about in this game world yeah stagmire steg stonemire whatever the hell his name is i think it's he, his company name is different it's than his stonemire name, which because is, it's it's but his name isn't stonemire no it's, it's stagmire yeah. and then the the woman that he works with his, his last name is meyer jamie jamie's his name oh Wait. Jamie Stegmeyer is his name. That's right. I don't know. I love how we have all human knowledge at our fingertips. Do you know why? Because I can't talk and do it at the same time. I know. I'm putting too much on you. <laughs> Anyways, I'll, I'll fill the space while you look that up. Jamie Stegmeyer, he's one of the characters where I'm like, I got to play one of his games I'm really curious about. And then the other one I'm really curious about is Ryan Lukart, Lockhart, Red Raven Games. He okay. did uh, Above and Below. Oh, I've heard nothing but good, good things about that. I, I haven't played any of his games either. That's on the list. Oh, Jamie Stegmeyer and Alan Stone. Oh, okay. So Stone, so Stone and Meyer, and they they combined them. You know, their logo makes me think of, of that game Firewatch that came out, which it's by. Oh my god, dude! Have seriously? You? Oh wait, no, no, I do have Firewatch. You're a park Firewatch Ranger. Is the, yes, my girlfriend, my ex girlfriend, was playing that game. I remember. So good. And it was very like atmospheric. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So good. <laughs> so good. You have no idea how good. Okay. I don't. I don't. Pick I'm, it up on the Steam sale. It's like $14. Uh, I, don't play video games. I don't care. I don't, I don't care if you don't play video games. Do it. I want to play video games. I need I need a magic room where time stops and I can just go in. You can just watch my live stream of it. What's that? You can just watch the live stream I did of it. Well, this is why, you know, this is why I think these live streaming. Oh, we're being offered a lozen. Is that what Crystallized this is? ginger. Crystallized ginger. Right, here, I'm gonna put my mic down. Collagen. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Crystallized ginger. Oh, it's so good. Some crystallized ginger. So good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna eat this Campo probably Santa. later because yeah. otherwise I'll have it clacking around <laughs> in my mouth while I'm. Um, okay, so Firewatch. Firewatch, we're talking about. I now. don't care if you don't play video games. <laughs> it's fifteen dollars. It's four hours long. It is some of like I don't usually play narrative games, and I, yeah. I try not to. I like I just played Limbo, which mm-hmm. is. Also, super Limbo's good. epic. So good. 
Limbo is more up my alley. It's good. I think that company, Limbo, the Limbo, the company that did Limbo just came out with a new game mm-hmm. um, that's very Limbo esque. Okay, um, so it's like a survival side scroller ish. It's a, yeah, it's a side scroller puzzle thing. Okay. You have to pick up freaking Firewatch. Well, I saw a lot of it, so I don't know if I have to. You do. No, you don't understand. <laughs> because it's got a conversation tree where you can go, because you're talking through someone. Like, are you going to hit on the girl? Or are you going to right, of, or are you like, going to be kind of a dick to her? Like, I remember that was a big part of the game. Yeah, you've got a visual novel that you play out in the beginning. It sets whether or not your relationship between your um, girlfriend or wife, or I forget whichever it is, and that sets the relationship, and then you can kind of... It's so strictly heavily role play where, and then you go into the national park that you're the 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 Firewatch expert at, and mm-hmm. you can choose to respect those decisions in the beginning, or you can take your character and just be like, "Fuck everything!" <laughs> like this, uh, this girl sounds pretty. I'm gonna hit on her, yeah, or yeah. this girl, I don't want to have anything to do with her. I'm just not gonna talk on my walkie talkie, dude. It's so good. So good. I mean, I just remember the delivery of everything was really good. Just, I mean, it's uh, plus it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the amount of times that I just stopped and I just looked at the vistas that I was Look walking how upon. Beautiful, the world is, dude. <laughs> if there's an argument for games it's as a art, national park. Okay, go. if there's an argument for games as That's art, art, Firewatch is going to be in that argument. You know, my my game. It's been a while since so this is old news. Did you ever play uh, The Last of Us? I played like three or four hours of it. Okay, that's that, one that my that that's one that my girlfriend and I played. That game was yeah, together. no, that was a that was a last like game. You know, you're playing a game, you're shooting things. That but just the story and the delivery of everything was just so beautiful that I'm like, I want to give this game an Oscar. I, like I did, like the acting is more convincing in this game than some movies I've seen. Naughty Dog does they make films that you play. That's right. I've always heard that I would probably like Uncharted. Uh, yeah, because exactly. you would. Yeah, 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 because it's an amazing game. Yeah. Uh, the early Uncharted one is a little bit tedious, and there's Uncharted four. Apparently, there's a whole bunch of climbing that just takes you right out of the immersion, where you huh. just climb for thirty minutes, and then that's it. <laughs> you just climb, and you're just climbing up a hill, and you're climbing <laughs> up a, a, a mountain or whatever. And it's like, oh, I'm gonna fall, and I'm oh no, I have to start over. Uncharted three, A Thief's End, I think, is one of my favorite games of all time. Hmm. No, I've heard I would really like this. Like, one of my friends specifically keeps telling me, you got to play Uncharted. you got to play Uncharted. Because so. you got to. Firewatch on Uncharted, Charlie. You don't understand. <laughs> okay, I will do this. Um, all you need to do is show me where the magic door to the magic room where time stops is. <laughs> and I can have an infinity of free time <laughs> to fuck around and just catch up on all these little wonderful things. It's so good. <laughs> so good. So let's think about what we've talked about so far on We've talked about Toy Factor. We've talked about pop culture. We've talked about expansions. We've been all over the map for the most part. But we've, we've actually mostly just talked about entertainment and games. So you can't say that we've gone off topic, per se. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, focus on board games, I suppose. Do you have an idea of what kind of show you want to make? Or are you still trying to decide that? I haven't decided. I think I kind of just want to let it evolve naturally there's Mm -hmm. back when we were doing cards and shit we had our little show uh chit chat chit chat yeah you guys are so good at that i know i know (laughs) and then we had our our game state show and our chit chat was kind of us just like shooting the shit this yeah exactly like this and i the whole goal for we only did two episodes i think um of chit chat was i was going to pitch it to one of my radio friends my Mm -hmm. internet radio friends and we were just going to have an hour-long slot on, on Saturday. I think it was at 11 o'clock or something like that. And that was what that show was supposed to be. But we had never... Fucking shit hit the fan. Man, if anybody's following the, the Cards and Shit blog, I did a huge write-up about it, about the whole fallout. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still bitter about it, dude. You're bitter? I am, because like... Because uh, I, I, I loved... Out. I'm Let going to. Out. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what people want to hear. Well, because I had poured so much effort yeah. into 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 CNC and cards and shit and, and game state and, and getting in with reviewers and industry and with you, and then all of a sudden, everything that I'm doing is costing me more and more money, right? And where I want to do this thing, we have a deadline to do this thing, the deadline is now gone, we have not produced anything for this client, <laughs> and I am the one directly responsible yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it wasn't even necessarily my fault most of the time. And granted, sometimes it was. Or like, I'd show up at the game and I have no idea how to do it. And everybody gets frustrated and they just, it's like, fuck it, we're not doing this. I just, I think I'm still reeling from the fallout of me not being able to deliver to these people that I promised I would deliver to. Just feeling guilt. So much guilt, dude. Plus, not to mention, 
I had this thing where I looked at my board, I looked at my shelf, and I have significantly more games than you. Oh yeah, right. My neighbor has three times the amount of games that I have. Holy crap! Yeah, dude, it's crazy. Like, it's great. His collection is amazing. Any game that you think of, he's got it. I guarantee it. So, I looked at my shelf and I did the math, and I'm like, okay, so here are my core games. I'm gonna call those at sixty dollars. I have my smaller games. I'm going to call those at like 35 because they're from 20 to 40, right? And then I have my tiny box games, so I'm going to call it 20. And I did the math. Even considering the discounts that I usually buy my stuff at, yeah, yeah. which I rarely buy at MSRP, $4,000? Yeah. I could have just bought a fucking car, <laughs> which I need because my car <laughs> is literally shitting a piston in the parking lot right yeah. now. And I'm just like, that could have gotten me like, a 2012 <laughs> Mitsubishi with under 100,000 miles on it. That's the bouncing act, man. That's the, it's, on one hand, here's the, here's the thing. This is where I'm envious of you. This is, this is the, this is the I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a positive spin on it. Part of the reason why I like hanging out with you is because you have a passion for games. And that passion is what makes you go, I'm going to spend labor money. I'm going to not buy a car, and instead I'm going to put this cardboard on my shelf. And maybe I, t- touch it every couple of months. <laughs> I think that's just me um, being stupid, though. Well, because <laughs> look at it this way. Okay, so my game group dissolved entirely with the dissolution of, of cards and shit, right? Yeah. And it's happened to me too. Yeah. So like, I have all of these things that I would play every multiple times a week. Yeah. And now I don't. Yeah. So like, I'm feeling the Im- the immediate delayed impact of me spending that money. Okay. I mean. I guess, I guess, yeah. Okay. Well, let me, I, I guess I'm failing at this. <laughs> but let me, hold on, let me let me try to pull it back. It's consumerism <laughs> that is is it comes out of passion. I yeah. guess is what I'm trying to say here. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's like it's like okay. Here's here's a, here's a way to put it. Um, if if you really liked golf, uh-huh. okay, and you're going out every weekend and you're just hitting balls, and you're just going on golf courses, you're going to spend as much, if not more, money on that yeah. as you are on the games. And, and, and it's, it's filling, you know what I mean? That guy, that same guy could have bought a car, yeah. and then he would just get to Dunkin' Donuts quack, quicker. Quacker. I almost said quacker. <laughs> I almost said quacker. He would just get there quicker. I don't know. I mean, I get it. There's, I, 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 I always have this problem where, I love how we're talking about you. I'm just going to start talking about myself. I always have this problem where um, I had all these art friends uh-huh. who are, again, they're, big into pop culture they'd always be drawing like like my friend rory would be like check out this picture of harley quinn i drew and it's amazing and i look at him like god rory i wish i could love anything as much as you love comic books anything you know because that love like i guess the point i'm trying to get to here and this is where i like i'm a little jealous of it i feel like that natural passion and that love is like kindling for creativity does that make sense it does absolutely and I mean, I, I don't know. That, that's so. That's a good thing. Is it, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. It's a good thing. It's like you, there's a balance there, but it, it's a good thing to have passion for these things. So, yeah. So I change passion every two years. You change passions. Okay. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> so, first it was skateboarding. Did oh, that for okay. two years. Broke my wrist. <sighs> have yet to skateboard again. Yeah. Like at a park, right? Um, <laughs> after that, it was uh, dodgeball. That's a cool one. It was great. Dodgeball is awesome. That sounds super I, fun. It's actually. fucking amazing. <laughs> um, and then it was something or whatever. I think it, then it was records. Oh, vinyl records. Vinyl. And I spent. That seems expensive hobby. Very expensive. And I they're just sitting in my room because I don't have a, a table to play them on anymore. Okay, so it was records, right? And then board games. Board games. But the time frame for each of those, two years. Uh-oh. So are you, like, at the end of a two-year cycle? I'm past the two years Uh-oh. of the cycle. Have you, Has it shifted, or do you still feel a certain... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That's the thing, because of all this shit that's happened earlier. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's it, if it's cycled out. But now, so, like, my cycle for board games is done. So what I'm doing, <laughs> this is so dumb, is I'm buying games for other people. Yeah. Mainly my girlfriend, because then I'd still get to play them, but they're not mine. So, like, I'm doing a good thing, because I'm buying people gifts. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, there is also a joy in what is it about with board games specifically? Too, like, there's a joy in saying, "I'm going to show you how this works." Yeah. And I'm going to watch that little spark in your eye when you go, "Oh," you know, when it clicks, when it clicks for you. And then, even though 
I already know what that spark feels like. I kind of get like a little residual when I watch. Like, so in Dominion, you know, these cards just keep reshuffling and it gets, and, and then they go, oh, you know, <laughs> they, they, they see it and they, and they fall into it and they go, what if I combo these things? I'm like, yeah, I thought about that already, but it makes me happy to see that you thought of that now, you know? I don't know. That's kind of the magic with the board games. It's, it's too much. It's too much. Um, the trade-off, unfortunately, with board games is spatially. They take up a lot of space. I've been and your of- wallet and you have no more money. True. Flat out acquisition disorder. Both buying a game, buying all of the expansions, and you know not what? buying a car. I, I had a friend in high school, who I'm sure we all had this friend, but I had a friend in high school who owned every single video game console mm-hmm. in existence. I did that as well. And had. So my pro- dad did it. Probably like at least a fourth or half of every game that came out on every single one of those yeah. consoles. Just. I mean, you go into his room, and he would just have these, like, shelves, that just shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves, you know. And, you know, we're talking about these, like, s- cycles of addiction. Um, that's where it can always go too far. I wonder about how that's going to look with the board game. Because I, like w- I feel like right now we're in a cycle with board games where it's very hip, and it's kind of, like, inside you, you're like... I want a shelf that looks like the shelf in the podcast that I see that ha- that from the from the floor to the ceiling is covered because there's something about that that's exciting, it looks you know. Good. It looks cool. It looks sexy. But but you can accomplish that like a middle <laughs> a a middle class, you know, middle of the road wages person can accomplish a psychotically large amount of board games in two or three years. Yeah. You know, you can have that in two or three years and then what? Then it does it become just pruning that has become like a kind of bonsai tree where you're like okay well now i'm still gonna have the shelf but i'm gonna make that shelf like these are the perfect games and categories of three player four i went to a person's house who had a lot of games but it was not pruned you know so i wondered like god this literally is just a decoration at this point Mm. maybe maybe it can be that but speaking of decorations i have had this idea that i've been wanting to do for ages okay so at goodwill you can find old copies of avalon hill games that are probably missing parts yeah. But the boards for old Avalon Hill games are super pretty. Yeah. I mean, like, okay, so we played uh, 1901. That was pretty good. Pretty good board. Two weeks ago, the, the back of the board. I know you love that. I just want to frame it and put it on my wall. Like, no joke. I want to I want to dice it up because it's split into four quadrants. I want to I want to take an X-Acto blade and I want to just like, bam, 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 bam. Set board game thing. So here's the thing. I have, the thing. I have three Avalon Hill board games in my closet i know i have a blitzkrieg i have um d-day and i have iron men in wooden ships across those there are uh seven boards because they're all t- they're two pieces right um two for one three for another and the two for another i'm just gonna buy frames for them i'm gonna buy frames i'm gonna mount them and i'm gonna fucking that's put what you them do. Up on my wall. that's how you that's how you get some of your money money back for these games is you need to like shadow box them yeah and, like make them little works of art yeah! you sell at first friday <laughs> so dude just, yes <laughs> i'm just saying like what a unique Michael Coe does that for each of his games. He has yeah, his wife has, make those a shot are So box. beautiful. Those so little beautiful. that's a great way to like show the look feel. Um I kinda wanna I'm gonna steal that idea one of these days. One of these days Do it. I get around to it. Do it's, it for trucking it's, card game. It's a effective way to show off the whole experience. But I also think there's something artistic. I think that's another part of where the just kind of the love of this hobby comes in is just there is something beautiful when a game is pretty and it's all set up mm-hmm. and like all the pieces are on the board, it just looks nice. It's like an interactive piece of art that you get to kind of partake in. Absolutely. I mean, when I was a kid, when I, and I first, cause, cause magic came out in what was it? 1994, something 90, 90. Well, no, you might be right. Well, anyways, it, it came out when I was a kid and at the time, right before it came out, I was in grade school. The hip thing to do was to buy just like collector cards of like, you know, X-Men collector cards. Like, oh, oh yeah. I have all 300 X-Men collector cards. And then Ma- or Magic came out, and the whole concept of a game that was also art wasn't really that... Uh, 93. Yeah. It did come out in 93. Common. And so I just bought it because I liked how the art looked. That's it. I just... And I'll never forget, like, when I was young and I got swindled. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so it was a funny story. Because, again, I was very art-oriented. Uh. I just bought the... I mean, I maybe played, like, actual two games if of it. If you say didn't... anything about a Black Lotus, I will slap you. No, no, no. I'm not okay, going to... I mean... Boxes? Maybe. I don't know. Here's the thing. All I know is, you know, when it first came out, I bought a bunch of packs. And, you know, I just like, oh, this is pretty. And, like, oh, I like how this card looks, you know. And my favorite card was probably the worst card in the game. It doesn't matter just because it had the Shivian cool art. Dragon. Yeah, it was probably <laughs> was. I don't even remember. Anyways, my cousin comes into town. Mm-hmm. And he's also um, had them. And we were like, oh, oh, look at these cards. Look at these cards. And I noticed that he has one of these, like, big-ass books that has every – it's like an art book that has every single card 
in it Ooh. and like what it is and whether it's like out of print or yeah the duelist did that yeah it was it was just one of those nice bound like books and i'm like oh i love this book you have and so he goes well, i'll tell you what i'll trade you the book for all your cards and i was like uh, sure because then i could just have all the cards art on this book <laughs> so no because i was a child you need dude to i was a child so how I, old were you <laughs> Um, I was probably in middle school. I don't school. think that you're that dumb in middle school, no, Charlie. No, <laughs> I'm retarded. People don't understand. I'm, I am dumb. Well, here's the thing. Oh God, I can't, I can't, I can't say, it. I mean, and this is the thing. This is where it's like, why are you buying these things? Are you buying them because like you're some kind of like pop culture gold miner where you want to make money in the long run? Or are you tr- trying to get the play, the most pleasure out of the purchase? So in my case, even though, yes, I might've, I might've given away some valuable cards because these were early cards. Yeah. Like they were like right when it came out. Like I remember I had Ice Age cards. I had, um, I think Ice Age was as early as I might've had okay, potentially. Good. So that's good. not as scary, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a pretty early ones. Very, uh, yes. Um, but anyways, I just, um, I, I, I derived my pleasure from looking at the card art and I looked at that book. I still have that book. Do you I really? still have that book and I still love that book. So, can't say that i can't say that i'm sad about the trade even though he might have i don't know got a couple extra bucks from it i hate here's the thing i just hate money in general i know yeah. we need it it sucks that we can't barter anymore i mean we can't i mean i guess money is abstract bartering but i just i don't know it 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 it, it warps the joy in things Do you see what i'm saying like the way you reacted about like oh you traded this book clearly of lesser value for an assortment of 500 cards from early sets some of them for sure because this was before they're like oh this card clearly is worth more because there's like a little like red gold, you know, insignia on it. Back then, you just had to know, oh, this card is, you know, worth a lot because it's. You know, oh, I get it, dude. I, on the, I was in a uh, Pokemon when I was in ele- elementary school. Yeah. I traded. It was a foil Hitmonlee, which at the time was worth like twelve dollars. Yeah. Or something stupid like that, um, for like a Clefairy. Clefairy. Yeah, because I did, it wasn't in my list of things that i'm guessing clefairy okay is, garbage yeah is it was just a common really Him important was no, not no? at all no it, it, uh, clefairy was a common okay. and hitman lee was rare and then a foil rare and at the time like i don't know, stupid the only thing that matters about this story is i still have my first edition charizard, charizard. so that's good i'm trying to think if i played i think i did pokemon card game at least once it's actually really good yeah. i uh, it, I, it's kind of Magic the Gathering-ish, isn't it? A little bit? A little? A little? Um, My girlfriend's little brother just recently got into, into Pokemon, the card game. Is it kind of tableau-ish where you're like red, red, red? Like they don't go away? Kind of. Okay, so Pokemon, you've got you've got your two Pokemon that are fighting, and you have to attach energy cards to them. And then they do some more powerful things. To do the attacks and yeah, stuff, yeah. right? And then the cards that you have in your hand, you can either search through your deck or you can play a card to Pokemon to your bench, and you can evolve a Pokemon just by playing you know, second stage on top of it. Mm-hmm. And you can play your energy cards to just anywhere and do special effects and different attacks can poisons put people to sleep and stuff like that but the whole thing of it is it's not necessarily okay so how familiar are you with terms for magic so like pretty, johnny's pretty pretty vorthos and stuff like that wait what were those words the johnny and vorthos and... okay maybe not okay <laughs> I what I was talking about, but when so you... a johnny yeah. is somebody who wants to combo where johnny they do combo player okay yeah so, like, I'm going to do this thing because it enables me to do this thing, yeah, which yeah. in turn will do this and this and this and this. And then all of a sudden, 50 damage. Humans. Miracle Rogue, sons of bitches. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Pokemon is. Okay. That's that's Pokemon where you're, you're, you're comboing to set up your attack as opposed to comboing being your attack. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense. Kind of, yeah. So, like, I've got, okay, I play my Pokemon. Can't evolve this turn, right? But I'm going to search through my deck to get a card that allows me to attach extra energies to then change the stadium type to then play a trainer down that lets me get the second stage out so i can play that on the next turn and then my next turn evolve attack bam i mean i don't know what's happening with like the split cards and the ex and the mega evolutions and stuff nowadays but i mean i'm going to because magic the gathering is going into that direction with eldritch moon oh really yeah dude i would yeah check out the spoilers for eldritch moon it's insane huh they're so good you've got split cards do you, okay. I thought they already had split cards. Nope. Mm-mm. No? No, th- you're thinking of fused cards, where they had two cards on one card? Yeah. Too many cards on one card? No, this one, it's two full-sized cards that combine to make an even bigger fucking card. <laughs> <laughs> 
So like you've got Brasella, who is the combination of the Archangel Gisela and Bruna, corrupted by Emrakul. So if you have both of these cards on the table at the end of your upkeep, their if they're combined. they <laughs> flip the fuck over and they're, they're, they're Brasella the corrupted, and it's like it's this two cards horizontal, and it's just gonna kick your dick in, dude. So these cards that you have to have like on the outside of your board because they're double sided, or there will have to be a checklist card. Yeah, I was for say. them, um, like in the previous in a shred block for werewolves and stuff like that. Yeah, so they're gonna be. A, cool. I'm I'm back in, I'm back into magic hardcore. <sighs> that's that's a dangerous. That's a dangerous. That was my other hobby. It was it <laughs> magic was magic bad. before board games is what it was. I always wanted, like the whole collectible card game thing. Like I said. When I was young, it was mostly just like, oh my god, every card has a, n- a new little piece of art. How are we on time? Are we good? At 55, we're good. Every piece of art is a, is a, or every card is a new little piece of art. Yeah. I love it. It's a gallery and it's a game. Mm-hmm. So I was, you know, I mean, that in some ways aesthetically got me into gaming. Um, mm-hmm. In fact, one of these days I need to show this to you. I actually created a, um, a collectible card game that's just sitting on my shelf. Yeah. And it's got 300 unique pieces of art. Made this game just, I, and not even because I was heavy into playing things like Magic Rangers. I liked the idea of it. You know, I liked the idea of those types of games. And I, pl- I played some games with my friends that played Magic and I actually played the Warcraft card game Ooh. for a while. That, that one was good. I actually good. really like that game too. I don't know. There's something about the whole collectible card game. You can't just jump in face first at a, at a, at a collectible card game. No. I think it's the problem. I mean, sure they have intro decks. And they core try sets, to, but... but you can't do it. Okay, like for example, uh, Game of Thrones, the the trading card game by by what, Fantasy Flight, right? That game has been going on for years, years and years, and some of the first printed cards are still tournament staples. Second edition came out. First edition cards don't use them. Obviously, second edition, entirely different isk game. There are already so many expansions for that that if you wanted to get everything, you've got forty dollars for the core set. Yeah, you've got fifteen dollars six times over for all the chapter packs, and then you've got the the the, the like the pseudo big box expansion, like the first big. It's like a living card game. Yeah, it's an LCG. LCG. So like, granted, with each box that you're buying, you're getting all of the, you're getting a full play set. But I mean, I, LCGs. I mean, I know they've made several of them. Are they popular? I, I, I there's something about like I don't know. You tell me. You, you're more tuned in than I am. I don't know. I think so. It's region. It's super regional though, because Netrunner yeah. is is has kind of permeated. Netrunner. That's the one that's kind of been around the longest in a sense. Yeah, yeah, because Netrunner. Netrunner started off as as a as a TCG by Richard Garfield, I th- yeah. think. Yeah. Way back in the day, that's what he did after Magic, and then he came back, blah, blah, blah. But, like, Netrunner, there's so many stuff out now that there's you don't know where to start. You just can't. As far as I know, that's the only one that is permeated to even a considerable level that Magic has. I mean, Doomtown was going really, really I strong. Tried, I tried that game. Doomtown or Netrunner? D- Doomtown. Yeah? I don't like it. <laughs> yeah? I don't like it. Sorry, go on. <laughs> no, you're fine. Uh, Doomtown just shut down. Like, oh, it's, are they it's, done? Doomtown has been as far as... I can tell you this. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Like, it's beautiful. Yeah. That game is hard to explain. That is game it? is really hard to explain to people. It is not for a new person. I mean, it's one of those, like, you've got to be... you got to really know what the hell you're doing in these kind of games and how many people do and how many people have the money to spend with the amount of options that are out there to buy Doomtown and the 50 other things they want to paste on top of it, you know? So, yeah. I mean, I think that's just inherently the problem with collectible card games. I mean, Pathfinder and Pygo, they've kind of worked a little bit around that with a Pathfinder adventure card game, but that's just not, I, in my opinion, that's just not a very good game to begin with. Mm-hmm. Is that the one where it's like you're working together? Yeah. Okay. The, the co-op where you're working against the I've, s- I've and... seen it played, and there's like a bunch of stacks, and you gotta like, okay. It's all right. I mean, they kind of solved it in that s- sort of a thing where you've got the full box, but then you can buy these very specific things that you just throw in and you don't have to look do up cards you don't have to look up deck lists like you just go yeah and i think that's the way to do that i don't know i think that the accessibility for trading card games is an entirely new show in and of itself well i got excited years ago when dominion came out because i said they've solved it you know they've they've solved the that i want to play what feels like a card game that has the mm-hmm. strategy to it but it's not this ridiculous i just buy one box mm-hmm. you know and then i feel like they didn't solve it because now it's like th- that game came out and every game is just that game kind of but a little different you know there's not as much variety as i would hoped um for the whole uh 
what do you call that kind of game? The uh, deck builder style yeah. game. Um, but then you go into the expansions. Yeah. Because, oh, you're not, we're going to do the game and going to do an expansion? What? Yeah, because that's how you make money. That's how you make money. God, we come full circle. Now we're talking about expansion. Now we're talking about money again. See, t- <laughs> this is the thing. See, we're caught. This whole, we're, we are like, we are tiny bugs crawling through this beautiful tapestry. And we don't see it all. But, but looking from the top down, I mean, it's this war between aesthetic and and uh, personal finance and you know what I mean and people trying to make money and people trying to have fun and try to trying to figure out how to enjoy their lives <laughs> and if having a car is going to be more <laughs> enjoyable or having all the little bits of cardboard on their shelf and I don't know I don't have the answers I don't know if you do either I don't just, have an, I just, tell you what though I tell you what I do know what's that I need a new fucking car need, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> a, I don't know why this this probably People, if anyone listens to this, they're going to go, God, Charlie's a dumbass, because there's no connection to this. <laughs> but, you know, thinking about what we're talking about, there's a line. You, you've you've read, or have you read the movie? Or read the movie. Read, <laughs> read the book, um, The Watchmen. Yeah, the of comic course. book, yeah. There, I, there's a part in it I really like where Dr. Manhattan, someone says to him, like, oh, so, you know, we're all just little puppets, you know, mm-hmm. in, in, this, in this little vignette that you get to watch. And he's like, listen, I'm a puppet, too. But I just get to see the strings, you know. Yeah. And that's just, that's the best you can hope for. It's just at least see the strings, but you're still stuck up. You're still stuck up in the stupid little puppet dance. I'd that's say, all I have to say, guys. That's it. That's fine. That's a great <laughs> bookend to I think end the show. I th- you know what? That was an that was an hour. Was that an hour? That was an hour. That went by pretty 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 slicky slow. God, I'm dumb. <laughs> anyway. anyway. <laughs> I'm Andrew. And I'm Charlie. And I don't know what we are, but we had fun. We did. So that's all right. Enjoy we'll it. See. Consume it. Move remember, on with your lives. Remember, just buy a car instead. Just, just remember, look at it from the long view. You're puppet regardless. <laughs>